Today I am talking to Becky Baldwin from Fury, which is a four-piece heavy metal band from Birmingham. Hello Becky and thank you for joining Rock Chat with Trace. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Becky and I'm the bass player of Fury. How would you describe Fury music? Kind of very classic heavy metal, like kind of new wave of British heavy metal. I think Julian would like to think, uh, I, you know, I, I totally agree that it's kind of uh, Iron Maiden and Metallica all kind of rolled into one. More recently, I think we've taken more influences from bands like Queen and, you know, uh, used more, I don't know, uh, a little bit more proggy just like a bit more adventurous with our writing and, and use of like harmonies and stuff so you know those are probably the main influences going into the music uh, so I'm hoping that's kind of what we've achieved. Do you think your latest album the grand prize is a progression from your last album Lost in Space? Definitely I think in terms of um, uh, songwriting um, I think it's a lot more to the point which I think you know maybe some of the earlier albums suffered from a little bit just because they, they were very long songs and for, for some listeners it's not really what they want whereas we've kind of managed to just cut away a bit of the unnecessary stuff with the latest album and just, yeah just kind of got to the, the point of the song and got it all wrapped up in, in a bit much sooner and I think the the music is more I guess it, you could say it's more commercial so you know in some ways it's a progression uh, it's, it is different but I don't know whether you could say it's uh, better or worse like different fans will Think different things about the music but we're very happy with it and we think the sound has definitely been improving with every album that we've put out so far. What influenced the writing of the grand prize? I'm not really sure I mean actually I joined the band after a lot of the songs had already been written so you know with every album there's been a, a, a separate theme and so the grand prize you can see there's a theme of cars <laughs> it, I don't know if there was any particular thing that influenced that and you know made Julian decide to that the style of the album but it just so happened that the sounds that were coming out sounded like driving songs like road kind of themed things and it just kind of came about naturally and I guess just it, it maybe in what um, Julian was listening to more towards uh, more recently he's I guess less heavy stuff actually and you know just wanted to write things like that so I guess slight, slight change in influence but still very much fury at the core. We all sing is influenced by Freddie Mercury. How did that song come about? Julian has been a massive fan of Freddie Mercury. You know, I think he's said that, you know, he's one of the most influential performers on him. And, and you know, for many singers and just musicians in general, he's just like one of the most captivating performers of, you know, generations past and to come. I, I, you know, I, I can't imagine really anyone else uh, you can see on video that uh, can really deliver a performance like Freddie Mercury. So I think, you know, he wanted to make a tribute to the man that, you know, created so much in music and left such a legacy. You know, it just, the song had to be written. And I, I'm really impressed with how Julian put the lyrics together and made so many references to different Queen songs in, in the lyrics. It's very cleverly written. Who are your influences? Um, Mine, uh, well, my favourite band is Black Sabbath. That's uh, and my favourite bass player is uh, Black Sabbath bass player Giza Butler. Uh, Metallica as well. Uh, I think you know we all have a very common interest um, and influence in Metallica. Like we all absolutely love that band. Uh, Iron Maiden is also up there. Um, I'm really into uh, bands like Strapping Young Lad, uh, like Devin Townsend and those kind of heavier, you know, also heavier, but also more mellow in the kind of uh, Devin Townsend ones. But, you know, definitely classic heavy metal is my bag. Um, and, you know, you can see that in uh, the kind of music that Fury make, I suppose. Your third album, The Grand Prize, came out in April. Its first single was Galactic Rock. How did the idea for the video come about? It was... I don't know, a kind of a, a dream because we thought, knowing the, the lyrical content, so it's about a radio station in space and about uh, broadcasting music out to all different planets and all different like species of aliens and stuff <laughs> could come together and have a cool party uh, in, in space, wherever they are. Um, and it, it just seemed like a bit of a crazy concept, but Julian was quite 
adamant that we should do a video for it and then see what we can do with green screens and try and build a, the studio that we use called Capsark Studio into the almost like the cockpit of, of, a, of a spaceship when you have the window in front of you. Uh, so that would be like the control room going into the live room. It, that didn't end up working out quite like that, but we managed to achieve a very similar thing with just like the uh, creating the spaceship and using the green screen in the, the the room that we used and it went really well we used a seventh sky media and he like computer generated the spaceship like taking off and landing and um, yeah made all of the backgrounds for us to play around it and it was like I, I can't believe how great it looks in the end like it was you know not a particularly high budget venture and it was the first time I think we'd all done something that extreme and that you know that reliant on this technology so uh yeah it's quite amazing how it all came together and yeah really happy with, with how it came out you recently re-released The Lightning Dream. Can you tell me a little bit about the album? So the album was uh, Fury's first album, which came out in 2014. In the following five years, we uh, sold the first run of CDs. So last summer, I think we, we sold our last copies that had been printed at that time. But we didn't, because we were so far into the album recording of the grand prize, we didn't have the money to reprint the CDs for quite a long time. So it took a while after releasing the, the latest album to save up the money to get them reprinted. And we just wanted uh, to give people a bit more in this reissue because I think you know that that first album in 2014 it was the first album that Fury did and it was very kind of experimental with the studios using and also recording a few things at home with like varying uh, outcomes of, of like the quality of the sound and production so you know we thought it'd be great to re-record a couple of these songs and if we can include them on that album for people to they can buy the new version of if you know if they wanted it so yeah we re-recorded the song Haul Away and that's now included as a bonus track on the new reissued version and we also recorded Kill the Light which we just put out that didn't fit on the album unfortunately because as, as I said before these are very long songs and with the the 10 tracks track already reached like 79 minutes and 44 seconds or something like that and you can only fit 80 minutes on a CD so we were just out of like you know even that um the the track we did include haul away when the master came back to me i was like this will not fit on the <laughs> cd can you like trim a couple of seconds off each side because there was a couple of seconds of silence on each side of the master i had to get that cut off so that we could fit it onto the cd but there was no chance of getting it any more on so that's uh, now a bonus track. The new reissue of it, where is it? It actually also has a, a new front cover. So, you know, interestingly and uh, unfortunately as well, we lost the original artwork. The, the files were lost in those six years. So we couldn't get it reprinted and the artist didn't even have them either. So uh, we asked the same artist to redo it. However, you know, if you wanted to change it then but, you know, you can buy, uh, the, you know, the new one is not that different. It has the same track one, one bonus track, but, you know, that there's none of these left. What made you choose Kill the Light as the first single release? We chose those two songs. I think Haul Away, sorry, um, okay, yeah, so Haul Away was a song that we already kind of were very familiar with playing. We played it live a bunch and we, you know, just really enjoyed that song and thought it was worth doing it again and just, like, making it a bit more shiny. We had a lot of ideas as well because we'd actually played it live a few times with some guest vocalists. So we were going to play it at the album launch show in back in April when the album was supposed to come out with a big gig. Uh, that was meant to be with two guest vocalists uh, called Naya Eiffel and uh, Jade Grundy. And so because we had these backing vocalists for the purpose of the grand prize new songs, we also used them on some of the old tracks uh, and just wrote some extra guest uh, or backing vocal parts for them. And Haul Away was one of those songs and we quite liked how it sounded with the guest vocals. So we thought well, let's do that one because we can really add something to it by adding those vocals and you know somehow make it different from the the original because there was no point in redoing it if it's just going to sound exactly the same. But you know we wanted to both have the upgraded sound and also something arrangement wise to change it. So that was why we did Hall Away and then Kill the Light we did uh, because well Julian just felt like that song suffered the most from like a production that we weren't very happy with on the uh, 2014 
album, that version, like the, the guitar sounds weren't quite right. It wasn't very clear what was going on. So he thought, let's do that one because we can make it sound better. We weren't, not, we weren't quite sure what we were going to do with the guest vocalists at that point, but we managed to add some really interesting stuff in the studio with um, Pete Newdeck is who we record vocals with. So he had loads of great ideas and it really saved the song. When, when I first um, started learning it for this new recording, I thought like, why are we doing this one? Like, I really prefer some of the other songs that, from this album that we should be doing. But um, when I heard the finished results, I really thought like this was a very good idea. Like we've uh, you know made, given the song just a, a new like lease of life. It's now something uh, quite different. I mean, not completely different, but you know it it sounds really cool. And not that it didn't before, but it, yeah, it, <laughs> I really like it now. Um, it's become so much more catchy, I think. And uh, you know, I'm really happy with how the sounds came out. How have you coped with lockdown and not being able to talk? For me personally, uh, it's been like terrible. I hate it. Um, I mean, Julian has been talking about it and saying, you know, we, that we've done really well at considering. And, you know, I guess I agree that we, we focused our attention so much more online that we just wouldn't have done if we were touring with the release of the grand prize we would have been at venues like every weekend, every night and focusing so much on promoting those tour dates and you know trying to get as many people there physically as possible that we probably would have neglected our online presence a bit whereas because we knew we had to uh, adapt somehow we really threw everything like on the release day of the grand prize we just thought well let's just do what we can with what we have and we couldn't meet up because that was like at the height of the lockdown um, we couldn't really travel anywhere so we all did individually did a live stream from home to talk about something in the album like the inlays or you know our own little playthroughs and stuff and uh, and you know we focused more on creating videos and recording and writing stuff at home that meant that we did keep that momentum going quite a bit longer and also it meant that we could reach fans that we definitely wouldn't have uh, if we had been like touring all the time and not really doing stuff online because we've had loads of orders from of, of merchandise to going out to America, Germany, Norway, places like this that we've never played before and, you know, didn't have plans to tour there. So, you know, they may not have heard the music if we hadn't have been uh, pushing it so hard online. So, you know, I think we've adapted reasonably well considering it, like, it is terrible for musicians, like, it is terrible for bands, what's happening right now. But, you know, it, it wasn't going to destroy the album completely. Like, we didn't let that happen, which I'm really pleased. Because, you know, we, you know, you put years and years into something like this. And it all just depends on the timing of the release of the album to have all your shows lined up and have everything go to plan. And the plan's just completely shattered and you just have to figure out some way to keep the, the music going and keep people interested in that album for as long as possible and you know we, we did our best I, I can't imagine what else we really could have done with the technology that we have so yeah not 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 as bad as it could have been you've done a few live gigs without audiences how was that for you for me I, I really enjoyed it actually um it, it is strange between songs when you finish a song and then there's just complete dead silence it's um because you know you're still trying to Im think of it as a gig you can't think of it as a rehearsal you have to perform and get into that zone but um it is just a little bit awkward between songs where you it's just like tumbleweed and like an eerie silence when you're expecting like you know at least a sympathy clap even if they didn't like you I, for me it's I, i've really enjoyed doing them because i don't know i, I don't really I don't always need the crowd to be like there and super into it for me to get into it. Like I, I'm just ready to go as soon as we start playing and um, I'm happy to just be doing it. Um, and I just, you know, try and think of the people at home, like, you know, like we have been at home really bored watching, trying to watch like live streams and uh, really enjoying that. And, you know, trying to think about how, how they're viewing it and hoping that they're enjoying it. So yeah, it, they've been definitely worth doing. We'd really like to do some more and, you know, hopefully do some of these little uh, like <laughs> sit down social distance shows as well which we haven't done yet we've only done uh, audience free basically just just cameras kind of shows so far what's the most bizarre thing that happened to you when on stage oh okay so i'll probably think of a, a fury show i don't know possibly um a planned something that was actually planned but i didn't really know what was going on which was uh two years ago at uh, power metal quest fest which is a power metal festival in birmingham and 
um, we had this uh, song that we were playing and it's about like wizards and I think it's orcs, I guess so. <laughs> like Lord of the Rings, like orcs and Urukai and stuff um, battling. Or maybe it's not quite about that. But anyway, Julian had arranged for some this group of people who like to dress as like Urukai and, um, and, you know, wizards and uh, stuff like this. And they would come to the show and perform with us, get on stage with us and do a little reenactment of a, a battle. <laughs> but I didn't really know that this was going on. I mean, Judy had mentioned it and I'm like, oh yes, we're not going to have people on stage with us like having a battle, that's crazy. Or, you know, like surely that's going to be a bit tacky, it's a bit strange. But then I got to the show and there were these people backstage with like the, the masks and like the full gear on like looking amazing like they looked fantastic their outfits and I was like what are these guys doing here like who, who are these guys with and they're like oh they're with us what what <laughs> like, they, they, these are your um you know these these guys are on stage with you and I'm like, okay <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna go so uh oh yeah the song was uh, the battle of shadows veil vale. and yeah so we get on the stage and you know at a certain bit uh julian had already discussed with them that they'd come on stage and start like fighting with swords behind us um and then they leave and then some people dressed as wizards come on stage and they, they're throwing these like balls at each other and then there's like a glitter cannon <laughs> and I just was like what is going on here like I, I was just sort of glad that I wasn't that involved in the planning of that because uh, I was as surprised as the audience were at that point and you know it really made the show very memorable and I, I really appreciate those guys for coming in and making it such a great great show like it it was so cool we love doing stuff like that to make it a bit spontaneous and involving other people to just kind of make the the, the visual um and the narrative uh, a bit you know it makes it easier to get it across to the audience so we love doing stuff like that and you know that was probably the most fun thing um that's, that's that that was like surprising to me <laughs> that's happened at a fury show who would you say is the most organized in the band i'm gonna nominate myself for that one so i i like to kind of yeah uh, you know arrange the kind of uh merchandise and i you know so i run the merch store and keep on top of emails and stuff and yeah do interviews but yes i'm definitely the most organized no doubt in your video burnout you play mechanics did you have another dream job when you was a child <laughs> For me, uh, I used to want to be a vet. I wanted to uh, look after animals. Um, uh, yeah, uh, and the thing is, you have you have to be very clever to do that. And like, I think when I was quite young, I was doing pretty well at school, and I was like, yeah, we're going to be a vet. And then um, I discovered rock music, and then I stopped like studying and going to the library as much, and started just playing bass instead. And it totally took a nosedive all of my studying, and I was like, well, you're not smart enough to be a vet anymore. You're just going to have to be like a metalhead and play play rock music, and that'll be your job. <laughs> what do you do to relax away from music? I like watching films. Like uh, I love watching horror films and uh, stuff like this, and watching do documentaries and stuff. I guess I don't really. Um, I don't know. I don't really do very much else. <laughs> I don't know. I like to go outside and, uh, you know, walk and, and see things, be around like uh, nature and outdoors and stuff like that. I like seeing wildlife and things. So that, yeah, for me, that's the kind of things I'm into. But, you know, there isn't much spare time at the moment. It'd be a shame. What's your favourite horror film? It's an interesting one. I don't know. There's so many that I really love say one I mean I guess I've always I grew up watching The Exorcist quite a lot which was you know it's, it's a classic and I love it I think oh god there, there's so many really cool ones I just kind of love it as an entire genre <laughs> what would be one tip for someone who wants to learn bass I would say to you know not to be really boring but like to learn a bit of theory learn a bit of other instruments just just to be able to understand other instruments and you know you're going to be mostly playing as an ensemble like not very many bass players achieve as a solo artist bass playing and you know it's not I, I, I have way more fun playing with the band than I do like playing on my own so if you have like if you can develop an understanding of uh, other instruments like you know guitars and drums and you know and and the language to use that would be through music theory. I would say that that's like a, a really important thing to get interested in. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be boring. But yeah, like uh, I would say 
learn theory and establish a practice routine. Can you explain a little about the Bristol Rock Centre? Yes, yeah, so that is the uh, music school that I co-own with the couple of people that I met at university and yeah we, we started in like 2010 or 2011 um, just running out of our uh, one of the one of the owners garage we teach guitar bass drums and vocals uh, to private lessons and it just like grew over a couple of years and we, we realized that we needed our own premises and yet yeah, now we do have that so um, in 2013 we moved into uh, what used to be a doctor's surgery and we got it all soundproof um, and sorted out like that uh, and now we have like a rehearsal room which is also like drum teaching room and two other teaching rooms yeah so we, we teach all the kids there separately with like their own tutors and then we used to <laughs> we can't do it at the moment we used to run like workshops band workshops where we get all the disciplines all the different instruments together um, they learn a, uh, the, all the same song in, in with their own tutors and we put them together and get them to perform so people kids and adults as well would get to uh, play together for the first time in a band setting and it's almost like a, a live setting as well because we set up the the PA and the lights and stuff and you know it's just a kind of way to get people who are learning their instrument to take that dive into playing with other people and not be afraid of uh, playing live and making mistakes you know like everyone makes the the mistakes in their like in their performances but it really doesn't matter you just like try and find a way to come back into it and like don't don't stress it um so you know we're trying to break that down that like fear of performing in front of people and a lot of the students there they meet other people that they get on with and have the same taste in music and they can form a band together and then you know we then try and put on gigs like in proper venues where we will get like a band like Fury you know a, a kind of established band to play and they'll be supported by a student band who will maybe just play some covers or something like this so you know we've been trying to build a community here um, in the school but uh, at the moment it's, it's quite hard because we can all we can teach is the one-to-one -one lessons we can't really put together a big workshop where everyone's uh, mixing at the moment but we're, we're hoping that um, next year that sort of thing will be back on the cards because it is the, the thing that's unique about this school is the ability to network with other people and people who are learning and who like the same stuff because you know we're, we're specialists in rock music and we hope that most of the people who want lessons here uh, all like a very similar style of music. How did you get involved in the Musicians Union? Actually uh, so I joined the Musicians Union I don't know maybe 2011 or something just as a member and I don't know I guess for the first like a uh, couple of years or so I didn't really understand what I was what it was for but I as I uh, worked more as a tried to get some more work as a professional musician I came across certain things that I thought was very unfair like um, I was going for some auditions uh, and answering adverts for auditions looking for bass players and I was met with I don't know often not a very positive response when they saw that I was female or some adverts in particular would list uh, males only we're, we're only accepting uh, male males to uh, apply for this job and because of the, it was a particular website that was set up and because you have to put in your details when you first sign up you can't just say oh can I just audition anyway like you you ha like you literally cannot click the link to audition if you've uh, put in that you're female at the start and I think it also the other thing is that it defaults to male only if you don't put anything in it goes oh do you want to make this a male only post and then if you don't think about it and click no I want uh, both the gender all genders to apply then it, it just defaults to that so um, I was really struggling to get work and like this website I was paying a membership for to try and find auditions and stuff was blatantly like discrimi discriminating and like helping you know that you know of course some roles you're looking for a particular gender for, for fulfilling that role but you know it was really helping people be more closed-minded about this sort of thing and you know if they, they say oh would you rather have a male or female bass player like they, they probably go oh well we've got, already got a guy and we might as well have another guy whereas if someone auditioned and they were good and they were female they'd probably think about it but if you ask them that question they might just say male anyway <laughs> so uh, I was like kind of ranting about this because I um, I was pretty pissed off with how many people uh, how many adverts were 
I was not able to apply for. And then someone said, you should contact the Musicians Union because this is like blatant discrimination. It's terrible. And I was like, okay, good idea. So I did. I wrote them a very long email. And then they said like, well, yeah, this is this is pretty serious and that really sucks. Can you also, we really like your passion for this issue. Would you like to be, uh, join our Equalities Committee? So the uh, Musicians Union had a committee of Black minor- minority ethnic people, uh, people with disabilities, women, and, you know, people representing different minorities uh, in a committee together to focus on issues that musicians... With with those you know possible perceived disadvantages face and to talk about them and so yeah I went to a, a bunch of their meetings and we talked about some really interesting things and you know really opened my eyes to problems that uh, face people in this industry and the you know the discrimination throughout and uh, that's you know been there for many years and is still happening today um, you know the the committee doesn't uh it, it exists in a different kind of format now so now there's uh i'm in the regional committee of the southwest southwest of england and wales but yeah it was a really great time meeting up with those people and they're very inspiring people working for the union and you know fighting for equality for all musicians it was really wicked anything else you wish to mention fury will have a new music video coming out i think at the end of this month (laughs) we don't have a, a set time yet Uh, or dates so um, we've been filming a music video Uh, it was like a few weeks ago and it's very exciting so so far the the last like two music videos we've put out have been like DIY home recording home edited but very badly by me and you know filmed on our phones and stuff like this so uh, we're very excited to have an actual uh, videographer putting it together he shot it all it's the same guy that filmed Burnout for us so and that video went down so well um, so we're really hoping that this one will also impress people and uh you know it's a, it's an interesting song like you guys have already heard it i'm sure if um if you follow the band but the the video i think is going to be something quite special for us and uh yeah so please look look out for that in the next few weeks and you know look out for any like live streams and stuff we have and yes thank you for all your support lately it's been amazing Fury the Lightning Dream, released October the 5th, 2020. And I'd like to thank Becky for joining me on Rock Chat with Trace. Rock Chat with Trace.